This week, Inside MMA goes global in the land of the rising sun. Special guests, including the lightweight champ. You remember him from Dream 5, won that reserve bout, and wow, he got in the title and he won it. Joachim Hansen, glad to have you with us. Thank you. And how are you? I'm good. And you've got a friend here with you. Yeah, my uh, friend and sparring partner. Antonio Cavallo is with us. Welcome, Antonio. Thank you, sir. You are Canadian, now living in Japan and training with the Dutchman. That's correct, yeah. Does this make it an international MMA world, boss? It's all about love. It's all about <laughs> holding hands and everybody's happy. <laughs> it's all about love and holding hands. What has this whole experience been like for you to win Dream 5, to be the, the lightweight champ, and how's things changed for you? Uh, it was great, you know, to be a reserve. And, uh, uh, you know, my brother said to me, you know, if you should have uh, one night in your life that when everything goes your way, you, uh, you should have said, oh, I picked the right night, so. <laughs> you did. <laughs> hey, it's all good to have it all fall into place like that. Yeah, it's, it's good. Antonio, what were you thinking when you see that up kick? Uh, I actually didn't see it in the beginning. It was one of those things where I looked and all of a sudden I saw him on the floor and I was like, what the heck was that? And I had to watch the replay. He actually up kicked and then there was a second one in between that where he did it again. And it's almost like uh, Jacques Ressort almost like threw himself into the second kick and yeah. it was incredibly hard and you could see his jaw kind of... <laughs> go off to the side and, and you know and you have your middleweight champion of the world right there wins all these fights just about everyone by submission had not lost since his MMA debut and then he tries to he's going to go for a strike and he winds up getting knocked out Joe King uh, I always liked the up kicks and uh, that was a pretty strange movement because uh, his uh, leg wasn't extended first it was and it came back and then uh, Jokare went in and he got him straight on the jaw it's just like train Two trains collision, bam, head to head. Well, and like Antonio said, at first it was tough to see because he avoids the first upper up uh, up kick. Then he's trying to go in, and that's when he got tagged. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, I, I mean, we we train that all the time, obviously. And and I mean, the the first attack was with intent, and the second one somehow he he, he got his leg back on time, and it, it landed so solid. I was I was shocked. I didn't, yeah, like I said, I didn't see it the first time. Yeah. And of course, <laughs> Joachim, what is next for you? When's your next fight? Uh, my next fight uh, is uh, New Year's Eve, I guess. Uh, yeah, it is. And it'll be here? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Well, over at Saitama, I'm sure not here. But <laughs> Any word on your point? Who are you fighting? How's that training? How's everything going on? Uh, I don't know uh, exactly who I'm fighting yet. I heard some rumors, and uh, I hope, still hope that it will be Eddie Alvarez, because I think that he deserves the first title shot. Yeah. Very nice. I, I think that's great. Uh, what shirt you got on there? It's a uh, Fight Factory t shirt. Uh, that's Eddie Alvarez. Eddie Alvarez shirt. <laughs> yeah. Is that a deal? Like he gives you the t shirt, you fight him? Yeah, he gave me some money to put it on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, he gave me some t shirts and I gave him some t shirts after the fight. A t shirt just like the one Antonio's wearing? Yeah, yeah. Antonio, what is the training? How's that going? Do you train? Uh, a lot now with Joachim, or how does that work with your training here in Japan? Yeah, normally when, uh, even before, for a while now, Joachim would come down and he'd have fights. He'd stay in Japan for at least two to three weeks at a time, and we'd train together at the gym. And, I mean, we've known each other since, you know, the Shuto days. We were both in Shuto. And uh, as soon as we met each other, we hit it off as friends, and we had a lot in common, and, you know. And for, for some reason, it, we just kept meeting up over and over again in Japan, and we just figured, hey, let's start training together. And... And it's worked out pretty good, actually. How's everything going with you right now? Um, <laughs> What's up for you next? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I faltered a little bit in my career, so unfortunately I'm, I'm going to try to pick myself up and, and, and come back again. I mean, at some point I was uh, pretty high ranked, I guess, at 145. Certainly, you were in our then, top 10 and inside MMA. Yeah, and um, so I faltered a little bit, so I, I got I to gotta go back to the gym and start over again and, and uh, hopefully find a home and, and, and start, to, start to fight and put on good shows again. I'm sure you will. Guys, stay around. We're going to talk to you. Your middle, your uh, lightweight reserve fight There's about 100 to 1 that this fight would matter uh, any more than just on your record. And then, lo and behold, you've got to step in when uh, Eddie Alvarez gets injured and can't keep going. Uh, you know, I thought that created a lot of drama, you know, and, and, and certainly brought a lot of attention to yourself. Yeah, I thought uh, I was uh, just going to Japan uh, in my mind to have that fight with Black Mamba. And after the fight, I, you know, all... Uh, yeah, you're back in the locker room yeah. just kicking back, huh? Yeah, and suddenly I have to do the final. So it was a strange night, you know. Yeah.
Well, we got you two guys here. I want to ask you about some fights coming up. Uh, first off, uh, Randy Couture returns to the UFC to fight Brock Lesnar. What do you think about that, Antonio? Uh, interesting fight, actually. You know, obviously, uh, Randy's got the experience, no question. Uh, but Brock Lesnar is such, a, such an athlete, so powerful, so much speed. Uh, I think he's always dangerous, and uh, I think he's going to keep improving. So I think he'll, he could present a problem for Randy, although I think Randy's experience may take over the fight you know, in the later rounds. So it should be interesting, though. Do you keep up with that? Do you follow that much, the heavyweights and Randy Couture? Yeah. What about this return that he's making against Lesnar, who, who is one of the few guys as big as, uh, as Overeem? <laughs> he's a big guy. Yeah, but uh, Randy Couture, he, he never stops surprising, you know. So uh, yeah, it's open, anything can happen, you know. But uh, Brock Lesnar, is, uh, he's a huge guy. Yeah. So. Yeah. Let me ask you about Fedor, uh, who's uh, the most, maybe one of the most recognizable fighters certainly in the world right now, and uh, some consider him the best regardless of weight class. He was at Dream 6. He is supposed to be coming back to fight, as he usually does uh, on New Year's Eve here in Japan. Uh, what's the whole mystique being around Fedor and seeing Fedor? Do you have a chance to talk to him much? Have you been around him much? Yeah, I've been uh, talking to him a couple of times. He's a really quiet type, a nice guy. and. Uh, I also think he's, he's the best in the world. It's no question about it. What is special about him? He's kind of got that mystique, hasn't he, Antonio? Yeah, he's so calm and, uh, you know, almost emotionless. But uh, he's, you know, you can see it in his eyes. He's a kind human being outside of the ring. And uh, he's just such a great fighter. It's just hard to find anyone who can match up to him. And just when you think... Uh, someone can match up to him. He does one of those fights like Tim Sylvia, yeah. and next thing you know, everyone's like, "Wow, he is the best in the world." You know, so who knows what's going to happen in the future for Fedor, right? And who knows about a mu another much anticipated fight coming up? Uh, you know, it won't be that long till this actually happens. George St. Pierre taking on B.J. Penn. I think that's one that everybody wants to see. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I, I thought the first fight was very close. I was there live. I watched it. Um, and it was really the last minute where one takedown sort of made the difference. And uh, I think, uh, you know, as long as BJ's hungry, uh, we'll always see an amazing fight. And St. Pierre is, a, you know, a constant professional where he keeps training and getting better also. And uh, I certainly hope to, uh, to see that fight happen very soon. All right, guys, thanks very much for being with us, Joachim. Looking forward to seeing you fight again. Tonio, great to have you with us. Best thank wishes. You. Thank, thank you. Thank Good you. luck. We'll see you back in action soon, I hope. I hope so, yes. All right. To get this and other great HDNet programming, call your cable or satellite provider and ask for HDNet.